But when you take something that's totally natural and, and superfood based or nanonutrient based, and it turns on a bunch of switches, I realized that we were actually activating people. Because once you feel good, you want to feel better. The question is, oh, could I feel even better than this? The answer is always yes. Ian, welcome to Wellness Force. It has been such a long time coming. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Josh. Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm excited. I loved our last conversation. I wished I would have recorded it. And we're going to get even deeper today on all things health. You know, this company, Activation Products, it came from a unique journey. I mean, you have been through it. A man in his 60s now and um, at one point in your life, the doctor was like, you have a thousand days to live. Uh, you turned to nature. You turned to nature, you understood the bounty and the wisdom of nature, and there's so many nuances here to explore for all of us that are looking to Mother Nature for her unique wisdom so we can live our life well. That's the whole point of this show. That's what it's been since day one, this physical and emotional intelligence so we can live our life well. Ian, if somebody met you out in public and maybe you're out with your kids and you're taking a walk in the park or whatever, and they just said, hey, I noticed that you're the CEO and the co-founder of Activation Products. If people didn't know what Activation was, we'll get into your story in a minute, but if people didn't know about Activation, tell us, what is Activation? Well, the, the name Activation itself came from an interesting discovery is that when people would take something for their body that made them feel really good without without a stimulant, right? Because you can stimulate people very easily. But when you take something that's totally natural and, and superfood based or nanonutrient based, and it turns on a bunch of switches, I realized that we were actually activating people. Because once you feel good, you want to feel better. The question is, oh, could I feel even better than this? The answer is always yes. So we, I realized I could activate people's enthusiasm to take better care of themselves and to live longer and have a higher quality life. And so then we needed to get very good at that because if we're actually going to provide access for people to invest in themselves, which is what people do, they invest time and energy and money in themselves. It's our responsibility to make sure they get the greatest return on their investment and that we're here to support that because that's what I want. And if I want that for me, I should want that for you and I should want that for everyone. So the term activation came up. I was on a, walking through some farmer's field Back in 2010, when that name popped into my mind, I went, oh, that's that's perfect. Yeah, activation product. Okay, cool. Because it's the products that we use to activate that physical part of a person. And then it becomes attached to the mental and the emotional and the enthusiasm and to produce joy. And, and lately, I finally realized what we're actually doing is producing equity. Mm -hmm. We're actually driving equity in people's lives by simply having a longer, higher quality life and every day longer than normal is priceless because they are affecting their, they're bringing their impact to their loved ones and the people they influence at a higher level, the longer you're alive. And the more you're alive, the longer you're alive, the more you're learning, the more value you, be, you become personally to yourself and to everyone around you. So I love that's that where phrase. the fun is. I love that phrase, activation, you know, to be activated, to be alive, to be a wellspring, to be inspiring, to lead a great life. And I think about how many people get served really judgments or jail sentences, Ian, by their physicians. And it's no knock on physicians. I mean, look, they do great services for people that need them in emergency situations. But this term epigenetics, we have talked about on the show quite a bit. Um, your family, your brother was a medical doctor for 30 years. Your sister was married to a surgeon. You have a lot of medical, I guess you could say energy in your family tree. But when you actually found yourself deep in the medical system, you had a gut check moment that was so unique and so surreal. I can't even imagine at 46, like getting hit with multiple health issues all at once. I think people can really relate to this if they've been in your shoes in their own unique way. Uh, did you know at that time that you would even be going down this road of activation or wellness or health? Like, take us to the moment where you were receiving this jail sentence, essentially, from physicians. Um, and then also some of the background in your family and, and you know, your, your two uncles that had passed. There's a rich story here. So I'd love for people to understand your heart, you know, why you actually do what you do today. Can you share with us that story? Sure. Well, from day one in 1958, from my personal experiences, I was programmed 
to totally believe in the entire medical system, the dental system, and to do what I was told and simply follow the rules, go through the educational process, get as high a degree as you could possibly get. And that was how we were programmed. And so I was the youngest out of five children. I saw my older siblings go through that entire process, you know, get all their degrees, <clears throat> master's degrees, doctor degrees, and so on. And I was 20 years old when I saw both of my uncle's contract get told they had cancer. One was told a year before he died. One was told three months before he died. And they were given terrible prognosis that if they didn't do X, Y, and Z, my one uncle, then he would be dead in three or four months. The other uncle was told, you're just going to die. Get your affairs in order. There's really nothing we can do. And he died. they both died exactly on time based on the prognosis. They both followed the exact instructions of their medical doctors who did the best they could. They weren't out to get them. They were doing the best they could based upon their educational knowledge that they had been programmed to teach people about how to deal with these health issues. And they died two days apart in September, 1978. And at that time being 20, it had a high impact on me mentally. It was like, man, that is messed up. They're 51 and 54 years old and they're gone. Wow. Well, my mom, who's their older sister, she is now still alive at 99. She turns 100 in May. Her mom lived till 103. So there were some genetics in there that were very strong. What happened? Their dad, my grandpa, died at 87. But he had never really taken care of his health in a, in a special way, you know. And back in 1978, people didn't know what to do. They just didn't know. There weren't alternatives, so-called. Yeah. Well, in 2004, when I was 46, I was facing very much the same things, only in a, even a broader spectrum, uh, spectrum, and I was younger. <laughs> like, okay, so how did this happen? And 26 years, fast forward, I don't even recognize myself from where I was at 20 physically. It was a mess. And I had all kinds of issues. I didn't realize that there was a ticking time bomb the whole entire time. And so when it all hits you at once, you realize, what's up? Heart disease, cancer diagnosis, which was incorrect, by the way, I never had cancer, but they wanted to call it cancer. I had a tumor growing between my legs. And it was an interesting location to have that. It was right up against my prostate and it was connected to my large intestine. And it was horrible. And it was pulsing with every heartbeat. Mm -hmm. And they said, if you don't cut that thing out, it's going to go easy, malignant, that'll kill you. And I'm like, yeah, but why do I have it? So as soon as I started asking simple questions, why do I have what I have? <clears throat> None of those answers, answers could ever be given other than, hey, this is normal. There's a, we do thousands of these types of operations a year. Men in their 40s this is very common. And you mentioned epigenetics. Yes. So I was told by my brother, who was a doctor for 30 years, he said, this is strictly genetic predisposition. <clears throat> you look like Uncle Don, the guy who died at 51 years old of thyroid cancer. And I had this liver thing going on, heart disease, and then this tumor growing between my legs. So I was like, okay, but that doesn't do anything for me. I don't care if I look like Uncle Don. I only care about this. I'm 46. We have seven children. We're raising them. I got an awesome wife. And something is going to take me physically out of here. I'm going to lose my interface. This is so not cool. What have I done? And every time I asked, what have I done? I was told, oh, no, no, it's not you. This is genetic predisposition. My brother told me I've had thousands of clients, patients come through his clinic. He had 11 doctors working for him. So he owned this clinic with all these doctors. And he was a general practitioner. He said, everyone who comes through, it's the same old thing. Either they, you know, they could be partying their face off and eat out of the dumpster and live till 94. They could be eating organic and juicing vegetables all day long and die at 36. It's all genetics. And I said, oh man, so you're telling me that it's not my fault. Nothing I'm doing, I can fix or hurt or make it better or worse. He goes, exactly correct. Just go to the medical doctors in Toronto. They know what they're talking about. They're very, you're in a good place. Some of the best doctors in the world are in Toronto. Just do what you're told. And I kept, it was just nagging at me the whole time. Like, mm, I think it's me. I don't know quite how. I don't know what's going on. But I, and fast forward, it was totally me. Yeah. It was everything I was saying, thinking, doing, acting, reacting. What I was eating, I wasn't managing my stress. I didn't even know how to do that. I wasn't getting proper sleep. 
I didn't know anything about breath or digestion. I was just living a normal life, trusting that I wouldn't, it wouldn't happen to me. And then it happened to me. So when I found out that it was everything I was doing, then how do you correct that? Because if you don't know, so I woke up one morning and I, I it was just like a revelatory thing. Just the thoughts came into my mind. It was like, I know for sure one thing. There are people in this earth somewhere who know all the stuff that I need to know to fix this naturally without medical intervention. But how do, I don't know who they are. I don't know where they are. don't know how to find them. But I know they have to exist. Of course they exist. We're in 2004 at that time. Yeah, the people at the top of their fields are alive and well on earth for a reason. Right. And, and so all I knew is I, I was desperate and so when you're desperate, you reach out, you pray. So I made a very solemn request. Hey, if I could be shown where they are, if I could be led to them, I'll listen. I'll do whatever I'm told. I'll pay whatever it costs, time, energy, money. I will suffer at whatever level is required. I'll have as much fun as required. I will, I'm, I'm open. And when you actually make that request, you're going to go for a ride. And nothing happened quickly. It was just a very slow motion thing. But fortunately, one step at a time kept leading to the next level because you can't go into the gym and lift 500 pounds. You got to go in and lift, lift 50. Yes. And so you start, otherwise you break, right? Mm -hmm. So I was, it was a gentle journey, a gentle leading of meeting more and more definitive people who had more and more information so that you could filter out all of the noise that happens in the natural world. Yeah, because the even in the... <laughs> The cure, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm just like, wowing. I'm, I'm visualizing everything you're telling me, like being with these people that say, this is the way it is. This is just the way it is. This jail sentence that I talked about earlier, because you talked about this in, in your video, and we'll link this in the show notes, your, your video on your website, your about video, which is phenomenal. And you said, I had a dangerous chronic case of ignorance. Mm -hmm. I mean, let that land. Everything you're talking about, people ha with their best intentions, which sometimes the road to hell is paved with, people with their best intentions are telling you it's just the way it is. And they're, they're trying from, from their limited intelligence, from their limited consciousness, to give you maybe an extension of life or some kind of a, uh, in, uh, intellectual problem to really a spiritual issue. W what was the spiritual issue that you weren't looking at or maybe you weren't even aware of that even led to being 46 and having multiple things come at you all at once from a spiritual perspective. What did you see looking back was clear? Well, I found out that I was deceived in certain areas. So if you're, if you or I are deceived in any area at all, we can't know it at that particular time because we're deceived and deceive deception is very tricky. So I, I, I started to suspect, Hey, I think I'm deceived in a lot of areas. I I'm open to the idea that I've, really messed up my thinking that I'm really not understanding what's going on. I think I do. I'm a, I'm a know-it-all. I think I'm a know-it-all. I think I'm egotistic. I think I'm greedy. I think I'm selfish. I think I'm a bigot. I think so. You know, so I was open to that idea. And sure enough, I found out that my programming had thousands of programs running in the background that were affecting every single iteration of everything I was doing and that they all had to be deleted. And I didn't, you can't delete them all at once. So finding out, coming to the real reality that, yeah, okay, you're going to have some ego death here, buddy. Hmm. You think you know something, everything you know is killing you. So you have to have a, a purging of everything you think you know with what's actually real. And if you think of like just sitting here today in this conversation here, there are billions, if not trillions of iterations happening every millisecond chemically within our body. Think of the number of thoughts that are going automatically in the background just to be able to sit here and all of the elemental stuff that in, in the energetic stuff and the bio photons and the electrons that are interacting to make everything happen automatically for all of us. And for every listener, every person who is receiving the signals of all this intelligent reality is going to have a, a deep correlation to be able to correlate with that, to be able to track it. Everyone's tracking this. So my ability to track was very dull back then, but I knew that. So the first thing was to find out, okay, actually, I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a good thing to learn. And yes, I am deceived. I just don't know where yet. You had to resensitize. To you almost had to resensitize your heart, your soul, your mind. Uh, deleting a thousand programs will cause system error. So you had to go <laughs> one by one with these programs, yes? 
Well, and I had to let them automatically get deleted by replacing. So it's, it, you can't really get rid of the old programming. A new understanding and a new protocol has to come in and purge. It's like getting rid of an old habit or a bad habit. You can only do it by replacing it with a good habit. Otherwise, that old habit just stick. It'll keep coming back. So it's, it's purgatory, right? It's purging. Purging everything. My, I had a physical purge. I had all the heavy metals, all the fungus, which is, you know, turns into all kinds of off-gassing, the chemical overloads, the bacterial overloads, all the, all the congestion of plugging all the pathways that could heal joints and organs and flush the body. They had to all be opened up. And, you, and again, you can't do it all at once because you can really harm yourself by detoxing too quickly. So I learned all about detox, learned all about the, the repair mechanisms required at a DNA level for the mitochondria to function together automatically and repair. Just like if you cut your arm, your body repairs it. That's a miracle. Go cut the leather seat in your car and see how it repairs. You know? <laughs> yes, so yes. There's, there's this life energy that is here in our spiritual world, keeping our body alive. And we are souls. We don't have a soul. We are a soul. And one of the biggest re revelations was that my body is not me. My body is the house I live in. And I mistook it for me very much. Oh, I have cancer. I have heart disease. That's not possible. A soul can't get cancer and a soul can't get heart disease. The body can get sick and they can call it names, but the body is either going to misbehave itself and keep being addicted to the wrong foods and throw temper tantrums when you try to correct your body, or it's going to come under subjection to you. You have to put your body under subjection to you. You got to take over. So I literally told my body one day, I said, you're fired. You're absolutely fired. You are such a spoiled, rotten little brat. You throw temper tantrums. I get gut aches, headaches if I don't eat garbage food. I was so addicted to all the chemicals and all the stuff and didn't even know that Wendy's and McDonald's had put all that stuff in there for addicting you to their food. I learned when I tried to stop. And then it was like, oh, there's going to be a scrap here. And I know who's going to win. My body's been winning all along. It's been the CEO of my life. I'm now the CEO of my life, me, the soul. And it is my body. Body, if you want to put up a fight, I'm in. Let's go. You want to get a gut ache? You want to get a headache, a throbbing headache? Bring it on. You're not going to get your way. I'm never going to eat that food again for the rest of my life. And I'm going to eat good stuff. And that took about, a, it was about a three-week battle of intense, tense battle that I, I just kept saying, yep, let's, I'm in. Let's keep scrapping it out. It's almost like a drug addiction too, like where, you know, yep. heroin addicts go through the shakes and they have cold sweats and they go through yep. an incredible detox. I think about a previous guest we had on the show um, and he said something so powerful and he said, genetics loads the gun, but behavior pulls the trigger. So you mm -hmm. may have, we all have epigenetic signals that turn off and on depending on what we feed it, either thoughts right. or food or hydration or even environment. You yourself were, for many years, you were in the car business in the 80s. Uh, after that, you went to, I believe you were in the oil industry um, after that. And, and then you went into elevators. You've had this long life of being around a lot of heavy metals, a lot of toxic chemicals. So beyond just your programs, Ian, you also environmentally were, and many people can relate to this, you were in situations where you were probably breathing in chemicals that weren't good for you. Um, having things on your epidermis, like heavy metals and whatnot. Like that's the kind of stuff that you have to actually physically purge, not yep. just mentally purge as well. How many people do you think shared your plight in America or just let's say in North America alone? Mm. Yeah, well, very few of the levels I had to go through because not very many people work in the oil field and lead is used everywhere in the oil field and all the connections for all the pipes in the wells, in the pipelines everywhere. And so lead goes everywhere. And that I was full of lead. Lead also makes you half crazy. Plus I had mercury fillings in and out of my teeth multiple times from the time I was a teen all the way through when I finally found out about that. And so then you have to detox all that stuff. And getting that out of the body safely is super important. To, we could literally have a whole entire yes. talk for hours about just heavy metal, but we won't get into it. The, the, the beautiful thing is I did learn exactly how to get them out of my system and how to repair the damage they had caused. And th there are means of measuring. 
So you have to be able to measure a lot of stuff to manage it. It is truly a physical thing. Like you said, you don't, there's no pretending. Oh, I think I got rid of it. No, you right. know, because it's seeing is believing in the physical world. In the spiritual world, believing is seeing. It's the exact opposite. But here, you know, in the physical world, we have to see it visibly out of our system and it can be measured. So that's the cool part. And then just learning what is the most efficient, safest way, at the most efficient time, energy, and money wise, because you don't want to go broke getting healthy. You do not want to chase your tail all day long to be a health nut. Mm -hmm. You simply want to have top level health based on your, the cards you were dealt right? Using epigenetics as your, as your ACE card, your Trump card. And you can do that by making sure you're dealing with the genetic frothing using different elemental nutritional molecules and minerals and various like pigments and essential fatty acids and essential amino acids and all those things that you bring in that the body automatically knows what to do with. So you feed your body intelligence, you unplug all of the pathways that were causing constipation with congestion where your body's intelligence can't even get to where it's got to go. And then you bring all those levels up and everything, just body intelligence more and more and more and more and more. And then you see it in your brain function. You see it in your emotional IQ. You, you can no longer be lied to because you can detect a lie coming from a year away. Mm. In your, like, in your life years. experience. In your life experience, do you feel like you had to go through these insanely challenging thresholds? I mean, multiple health issues all at once to really understand what the hell intelligence is, the innate intelligence in our body, the intelligence that runs all things, the higher power, however you want to call it. Like, at what point did you start to tap into source intelligence, something way bigger than you and start to lean and love and depend on that for your healing? I know. I think the biggest shift w began when the heavy metal started to be taken out because they're so oppressive. They literally called heavy metals because they're just weighing on you. And when they started to come out, I started to wake up a lot more. And then you start to look at the world around you and go, I'm not sure that I quite get what, where we are even. <laughs> right? Like, who are we? What are we doing here? What's yeah. this physical world? You know, what's the, what's the big game? You know, what's the overall, what's the purpose? Why do we do what we do? Are we just here to make a bunch of money and to get a bunch of popularity and to have a bunch of power over people? That's certainly not what we're here for. That's so old school. It's not cool. And I started finding out that money was simply an energy fuel. It's simply fuel. You could have the best car in the world or the worst car in the world. You don't have gas in your tank. You're not going anywhere. So you got to have gas, but you got to be using the gas. Don't pile it up in great big, huge tanks. And for what reason? It has to be moving continuously. And the money is not ours. The money is given to us to flow out as a value proposition to the world, to bring more value to people. You know, even when we started activation, I stumbled on the marine phytoplankton, which was this thing that discovered me, basically. And... Uh, and when it came in my path, I'd never heard of it before. And I noticed nobody around me had ever heard of it before. And I was up in Canada. So I got some. I got a kilogram of this powder. That was the first edition. Now, all I knew is that it, it felt like it was charging up my battery, but it took quite a bit of it. And it was quite expensive. So then I found out about how you could put it into a sea mineral by two people giving me their ideas and putting those ideas together and then producing this thing called Oceans Alive. And the only reason it got called Oceans Live is because at the time the movie Oceans Eleven had come out. And there was another product called E3 Live, which was a cyanobacteria algae. And so I thought, well, this is actually alive because you can take a fresh harvest of marine phytoplankton from the bioreactor in Europe where they make these heirloom strains. You place it in a concentrated sea mineral solution and it instantly stabilizes it. So there's no preservatives, no chemicals, no heat, no processing. It's literally like taking a fresh salad from your garden and it's always fresh from then on. So it has the vibe of the fresh thing. So when I got that, I showed some people in Canada, they turned their nose up at it. But when I took it to California, some people down there were like, hey, what's this stuff? Can I try that? <laughs> so they yeah. tried it. Was it Southern California? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, in Anaheim actually okay. at Expo West in March, 2007. Oh yeah. I've been there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so I went there every year from then on, even right up to the last time they had it, which they stopped in 2020. But uh, that was very interesting because 
the people in California was like, that's new. That's totally different than anything we've ever seen algae wise. That totally made me feel different. What's with that? Could I get some? So then that's how the whole small business started in the basement of our house in Toronto. We didn't have a company. We had no insurance. We had no, no certification whatsoever. All I knew is that if you're going to fill something in a bottle, you have to make a clean room in your house, get the beakers and the funnels. And we had the printer for the labels. And in the first 24 months after we were told it would never go anywhere in Canada by Canadians, we did $2.8 million in sales in 24 months out of our basement with no marketing division, no sales division. We just had the access to the product that we were flying in from Europe, bottling in our basement and shipping by Canada Post to California. Wow. With like, so we were, when you almost die, something yes. weird happens to you. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> right? you pull from a very deep reservoir because this plankton, and it's not just plankton, like we're gonna talk about the science of this too. I, this came on my radar through you. I had never heard about it until we had our conversation. The wellness industry is ripe with lots of different tools and things, mm -hmm. but it's super rare that I actually take something and I feel something from it. And I was sharing with you before we hit this record button, and I'm going to share it now. This is the Oceans Alive. This is the raw phytoplankton, and it's for energy and focus. Like This came to you because of what you had been through. Do you think that you would have ever even found it if you didn't go through really your own suffering to find it? Yeah, there would be no reason to ever run into it. And, and I was so early on, that was in 06, it was the end of 06 when I first heard of that. And it was, it was being put through, not this stuff here, but they had this marine phytoplankton so-called in a juice in a multi-level marketing company called Forever Green, I think it was called. And they called it Frequency. And I saw a video about this guy who claimed to have eliminated like terminal cancer out of his body by just simply taking it. Oh man, that's a good way to get the FCC on your butt. Yeah, but yeah. but he wasn't he wasn't making a claim of a cure per se. He just said, all I know is when I took it, it you know within three or four weeks they checked me and it was going away, and then within fourteen weeks it was gone. And that was it was called another day was the name of the video. It probably saw online somewhere under frequency. This guy named Tom out in Vancouver. So I, I thought, well, that's interesting. Hmm, I don't know. I'd try that. But they they he had sold out. And they were taking, they just put 37 milligrams in one full bottle for 70 bucks of juice at all these fruit, superfood fruit juices, right? And this thing called frequency SEA at the end, because it came from the, you know, this marine fighter blanket. So I got four bottles. And when it got there, I drank the first bottle. And all I did, I got was a big sugar hit. I drank the whole bottle. You're supposed to do it in a month. But when I looked at the bottle, it had 37 milligrams in the whole bottle. So I just guzzled it because that's nothing. And then I, I phoned the guy who sold it to me. I go, there's only three. He goes, oh, no, that's twice as much as it had last year. I go, mm -hmm. okay. So I woke up the next morning, got on Google, and I, I typed in raw marine phytoplankton bulk. That's all I put in. And it brought up a guy in Vancouver named David Hunter. And David Hunter had worked for that guy who was producing it. When he sold out to the MLM, David Hunter was told, hey, there's some stuff in Europe going on with this that you might want to check out. He had went over to Europe, found the concentrated powder of the stuff where they define the actual strains themselves, because there's over 40,000 strains of marine phytoplankton in the ocean. And there was only two after, after 35 years of study, 35 to 40 years of study, they had determined the strains that were good for biofuel, aquaculture, and they found two strains that were perfect for the human nutritional profile. What are those strains? Yeah. Right. Yeah, just two only. And then they have to grow them individually in these bulk photobioreactors using sunlight. It's this super sophisticated thing. It took them until 2006 to even have the photobioreactor at a level where it could produce consistently. And they have to have purified ocean water. You got to use real sunlight. It's this whole thing. You got to create a spring bloom environment for the marine phytoplankton to believe it's in a spring bloom and then produce naturally. So long story short is I show up just when they had really got it to a place of, of improvement. They kept improving it till 2013 when they maxed it out and they kept doing genetic selection, which is the opposite of genetic modification. So if you had a garden, for example, 
and you kept picking the best seeds every year, right. you would keep improving your garden every year. You just don't mm-hmm. have the same thing they do with dogs. They they are horses. They breed the studs. Ian, yes. I'm curious. You said there was two out of so many. People forget like the the plankton and the algae and, and things in the deep sea. This is like seventy to ninety percent of our oxygen we breathe on planet Earth. So there's some very potent wisdom in the ocean when it comes to these phytoplankton. You mentioned two specifically out of like the myriad. What are those two and how do you integrate that into bioavailability? So, well, there's, one is called uh, Gadatana and the other one is called Tetra. Tetrasemis is a long, you know, scientific name, but that's what we call it. And it, so the one has uh, a, lar- a large amount of EPA, right? Which is a, the most important fuel for omega-3s essential fatty acids. And then the other one has a lot of superoxide dismutase in it. And one is 14 microns. The other one is two microns. So, and they're both plant life. So there's no animal thing going on here, but they, they each combine together. So we have 10% of one and 90%. So 90% got a ton with the EPA, 10% with the superoxide dismutase. And that, that's after like ridiculous amounts of, of millions of dollars of money spent on research of all the iterations. And then finally, what does this stuff do in your system? Right. So they did a University of Greece study. Uh, th- these are all papers that are that are published privately. And they, they have European novel food certificates to prove heirloom. It's very cool stuff. So they, they never altered anything ever. They just simply support the natural growth of it. Mm-hmm. All they saw is that when you put it in your body, your body intelligence is like the whole orchestra playing at once. Instead of taking like individual elements or vitamins, you don't have to, because this is original creation stuff and your body resonates the best with that. And they just saw many different things clinically happen with people, but to do a publication to say, oh, it's going to do this. If you take that, then you got to go, then you're going into the drug world Mm -hmm. and you're going into massive clinical trials. And I, I told everyone that I said, it's just use your common sense. If you take something that supports the entire life of the ocean, there is eight times more life in the ocean than there is on land. Like you said, it's producing up to 90% of the oxygen we breathe, mm-hmm. the phytoplankton that you, and you find the two things, just take it and it will teach you. So the way it really taught me is I took it and the intelligence inside taught me what it does. And then I went, Oh, that's cool. Really? We should tell people about this. People should know because if it, if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. So let's get it out there, mm-hmm. and that's how it started. The and power was- of the power of this too is like I. So my experience was, I took it and I put it in like some cool water with some cubes, and that day I took a little bit less nootropics. It was a. It was almost like a buzz, maybe like a mild kind of electric feeling, but not like a caffeine feeling. You know, it didn't. No. It didn't make me feel like I was like out of body or, you know, going to have a withdrawal or something. And so I really liked how it felt. And the taste is very strong. It's almost like you're drinking the ocean. So you wouldn't want to do this raw. You definitely want to dilute this because this is very, very powerful. Have you seen this be something that on across your product skews, like is the number one? Is this something that people go to time and time again? Because there is three or four products that I've heard you talk about on many channels and they're must-haves. Like these are the things from mm-hmm. a mineral standpoint that we're most deficient in: um, the magnesium, uh, the Solaris, the plant sterols, and then also the oceans alive with with it, with the compounds that come from the ocean, from the sea. So is that is this like the anchor product for you, or what would you consider the anchor for activation? Yeah, that is. That's the the master product that has always been there, always sold the most, had the greatest response, and was the most difficult to get. So kind of a bit of a paradox mm. so difficult to get that we actually ran out of stock for the first time in 15 years we ran out of stock once this year and we just ran out of stock again and we're going to be back in stock this week we were out for like the last week and a half and there's a whole bunch of reasons for that it's logistics and supply chain problems that our producer in europe was suffering under yeah and this is the first time they've ever suffered under those things uh and i'm not going to get into the technical de- it was all technical the supply chain and so we only have a limited supply of that. That's the, one of the one of the holdbacks on that product. But nonetheless, the people who know about it, who have actually taken it, they stay on it for life. It is a definite must have. It has no stimulants. The beautiful thing it's got all of the periodic table elements in it in its original form that's biocompatible to you. 
So inside of your bodies is a one third strength ocean. If you cry a tear, you can taste that's one third strength ocean water. And it has all the elements in it. So when you take something from the ocean like that, and the marine phytoplankton lives off of sunlight and sea minerals. So it's, it's metabolizing sea minerals into plant, plant minerals. That's why the ocean is so powerful mm -hmm. for many, many different things. You can literally take ocean water purified at one third strength and inject it in as plasma. They did that during the war when they couldn't get blood. So the whole thing is based on plasma and your whole body's cell salts and your tissue salts getting brought up to speed. That's why it feels like you're charging your battery because there's no stimulants. How do you make that, sure, right? how do you make sure that the water is clean? You know, because gosh, our oceans, like it breaks my heart. Our oceans have been so polluted, oh, you know, man. there's trash dumps. I think there's yeah. even like a floating, you guys have heard about this, right? A floating Island of trash out there in the ocean Two somewhere. Of Two of them. Of and one of them is big as the size of Texas. And I, I live in Texas. It's freaking huge out here. So oh. it's, Texas is big. How do you make sure that this phytoplankton is pure and the water that it's getting grown in isn't affected by pollutants. Right. Yeah. You can't harvest it out of the ocean because you would never be able to know what strain you're getting anyway. It would just be a dog's breakfast or whatever you got. So what they have done is there the photobioreactors right by the ocean in the south part of south part of Spain. They they filter the water first of all through the sand. It comes through sand, so it's naturally filtered. But when it comes up into the photobioreactor, it goes through an autoclave. They, they can't have a single speck of pollutant in the ocean water itself because that will affect the grow. You have to have a purified environment for the phytoplankton to be happy to grow. And even any pH that's off, any kind of, of temperature, you have to have the flow rate. They're pumping the phytoplankton through the photobioreactor constantly. You got to have the right amount of sunlight. It's so sensitive. It takes 90 days to grow it from start to finish. So it is, it is so far beyond organic because even organic has all the rubber dust and the brake dust from all the cars mm -hmm. and trucks falling on the fields and all the fallout from whatever they're spraying above us on the food. This is completely protected. And it's just that that's the level of purity. So people do not have to even begin to concern themselves with any kind of ocean pollutants because it's a low, like an ocean on land. It's about the size of a soccer field. Mm -hmm. And it's these clear pipes that run back and forth and they sit under the sun. The last few weeks is when the final grow happens and it's all sunlight. So there's photosynthesis and it's a phenomenal thing to see. It comes out like, uh, it comes out of the centrifuge, like thick bubble gum. I thought it was going to be smart one day when I was over there in Spain and I said, oh, can I try a spoonful of that? And they go, you're going to eat a spoonful of that? I go, yeah. They go, okay. So I, I was on video and I, I had the spoonful and I put it in my mouth and it stuck my teeth together. I was like, Anyway, I, I choked it down and I regretted it because it, it, was, it alkalized my tummy quite a bit. It made me feel a little bit queasy for about half an hour okay. until my stomach balances off. But again, because it's really high alkaline and, and I felt fine. It was good, but it was, it's a waste because it's too much. Yeah. That stuff is so concentrated. Literally one dropper is going to do a, a number. What do people get wrong about the ocean and its healing benefits? Because you and I both know we, we're in the wellness world together. And there are so many products out there that people say do things and they really haven't spent the money and the r and I mean, you said you've spent millions going to the source in Europe to get these. What do people tend to get wrong about um, ocean and sea minerals, the phytoplankton? Like what are some of the myths out there? that you could squash and bring some truth to that you know of at least? I think you just have to know the certification levels of the purity because you can, you can get concentrated sea minerals. We have a product called trace it's done in Australia and they, they bring the ocean water in from a really clean part of the world and they put it into these big ponds and they let it all fall up, but they still have to go through a full certification analysis afterwards to make sure that it does not have harmful things in it, whether it's microbes or bacteria or metals or whatever. So you just, people have to be careful on the source who they are buying from. Uh, there's another product that's a trace mineral that comes out of Utah. So that's at a great salt lake. They, whether they purify that or not, I don't know, but it's been sitting there forever getting polluted on. So there's, there's a lot of myth about the ocean, but there's a lot of truth about the ocean. If you go off the coast and go swimming all the time, it's really good. You're getting negative ions off there. 
So sure. the ocean is able to cleanse itself to a large degree, a lot more than we would estimate, even though it's being super polluted. But there's a, yeah, just be careful. Like there's seaweed, there's kelp, there's dulse. Those things can be very good. Uh, there's fish out there, but look at the thing, Seaspiracy on Netflix. It's Netflix, of course, but, you know, Seaspiracy was kind of an eye opener on what's happening in the ocean. Yeah. I think if you're, if you're using the essence and the elements from it and they're in these purified environments, you're totally safe. I'm thinking about who this is really for. Yes, it's for somebody that just wants to have great health, but also for people on a specific healing journey. Mm -hmm. I look at the journey you've had from 46 to now you're in your 60s. So about 15 years ago is when this all really the wheels started to fall off the wagon. And your son was uh, 17, 18, 19 years old when this all started. You're a father of seven children, which is like, whoa, the, mm -hmm. the responsibility of that and the weight of that. Like what even inspired you to do that? Because I think about the parents that are listening, the people that are having health issues. The seven children is a big family. I mean, what, what in your heart made you want to have so many beings that you would be the steward for? You know, we had no intention of having a large family. Um, my wife and I were going to have a boy and a girl or a girl and a boy. We, that's what we knew. And she was 103 pounds, five foot two, a, a, a petite woman, but a really strong background. And, you know, raised on an organic farm. And just that was, I, she, I married her right off the farm. What an amazing woman. But we had, a, we had two boys, which shocked her that we didn't have a girl. Because you got a 50-50 chance, right? So we waited five years and then she got pregnant again and she was sure that was going to be a girl and it was a boy. <laughs> then we had another boy. We tried again. It was four boys, wow. but she was adamant to have a girl. Uh, number five was a girl. Number six was a boy and number seven was a girl because we were trying to even it out. Okay. Okay. And, and that's how we ended up with seven. And we we're super happy we did. We just didn't know. There was no pre-planning at all. Mm. We were like anybody else just to have a boy and a girl. That's it. You know, and so there, there wasn't like um, some kind of like, I'm going to replenish the earth, they're going to carry on my lineage, or is has it kind of morphed into that? Because I know one of your sons helps you with the company pretty deeply. Well, all the children completely helped for the first about 12 years. Packing in the basement and the shipping yep. and all that. That's right. Because it was 04 when it hit the wall, but it wasn't until really 07 when I, kind of 06, 07 when I started this, to learn and go into the re remediation side. But in 2004, my son was 19, my oldest son, and he was very athletic and very good shape, like I was when I, when I was his age. And he was bugging me constantly, Dad, you're out of shape. You look terrible. You know, I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm fine. So then one day I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll get in shape. This is before I found out how sick I was. Hmm. And so I went into the kitchen. And I took my shirt off and he took a picture of me. And when I, when I uploaded that from the Hitachi camera onto the computer, I was so shocked at the picture. I was like, what? Because cameras have no mercy. So I, I buried that picture. It stayed on the hard drive. And even it took three years to find that picture again, because that computer got shut down. And we had to go and find the hard drive and take it out and put it into another computer to get it because that computer was fried. And when I saw that picture three years later, after I had lost 90 pounds, it was like a totally different person. I was, I was even more shocked seeing what it looked like three years later. Is that online you, somewhere? Like, can we oh, show yeah. people that? It's, okay. I mean, Make sure we get that for our show notes below this video. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, yeah, I didn't even recognize that guy. I'm like, who is that? That's, that's not me. I'm buried in there somewhere. And I was buried under all the toxicity. And it was then from that point on, within about six months, all these weird things started to show up. And then it took from 2004 to 2009. At the end of 2009, I was in the medical range in totally safe zone with the blood panels and everything else. Wow. And so then I realized, okay, cool. How far can we go with this? How healthy can we get? And that became, then the fun journey started. Then I could say, I get stronger, faster, better. And so now I'm 63 with a biological age of a 25 year old. I don't have to look like I'm 25. I don't concern myself about that at all. Do you mean from a telomere aspect? Like, have you had that measured? Mm -hmm. Is that what you mean? Well, a, a cardiovascular Telomeres have already been taken care of a long time ago. My telomeres are long. Uh, that was done through the astragalus and those things back in the day. Mm -hmm. But everything I'm doing now is keeping, is maintaining that. There's a bunch of stuff. That's a whole, again, a whole nother, like a show that could go on, sure. on that level. So but the, yeah, the, the idea, Josh, is that you and anyone 
regard unless, unless they've gone over the threshold too far. But if they haven't, like I hadn't, you can all maintain a biological age of a 25 year old. So how flexible is your cardiovascular? That's, that would be the first sign because you know, the, the thing you do the most is you think, the second thing you do the most is you breathe. The third thing you do the most is you pump blood. So your cardiovascular system, which is miles and miles long, and the largest organ in your body is your endothelium layer, which is the size of a soccer field at least. It is what has to remain supple, flexible, and produce lots of nitric oxide. And it does that when you have the cardiovascular of a 25 year old. So you can't have any calcium building up in the walls of your arteries, microcirculation or veins. They have to stay supple. And we know exactly how to keep them supple. So people can get measured today. That's an easy measurement. And then they go in at three months later and they're going to have like a 25 year old. It's yeah. that fast. So is it, is it the other, I know iodine is very important. I also know that magnesium is very important. Iodine, magnesium, um, the plant sterols. What about these products specifically? And are there any others that we can talk about that actually help to give that elasticity and that health to the cardiovascular? Let's go specifically to cardiovascular. Right. So the ease product was the first one we discovered that assisted with that because we would see hypertension disappear within a few months of people spraying the magnesium through their skin because it relaxes the muscles and it does a bunch, it gets, it starts to marry up with calcium, right? To, so it doesn't build up in joints and around the arteries. But the biggest one of all that goes hand in glove with the magnesium is K2 MK7, vitamin K2. But it's a very specific type of K vitamin, which is the MK7. And there's a lot of people claim to have K2 MK7 which they do, but then the quality of it, the efficacy of it is essential. We didn't get into any vitamin supplements at all until this year. This is the first time in 15 years we've ever ventured into it because I didn't have any way to gauge that I could really measure to know that if I'm buying raw material from a company and putting it together in a product and providing that to our clients, is that actually as effective as we believe it is? Because everyone thinks they have the best product. Have you ever seen a company that doesn't say they have the best? Of course. The best right. tacos in the world. That's the <laughs> best every taco stand everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And so, but we know that that's not possible for everyone to have the best. So it goes good, great, greater, greatest. And the greatest is always a quantum leap above the second best. So then I finally realized, and, and I didn't come up with this, and I'm not sure that Bo Eason did, but Bo Eason was the first one I heard say it. He said, everyone, guys and girls, there, women, you, there's two levels in life. There's top level and everything underneath, just two levels, top level and everything underneath. So if, if everything underneath gets displaced by this here, you're never gonna go here again. So there's only two options. And, but you can only have those two options once you find out what it is. So K2MK7, to give you a perfect example of that, there's a company named Kappa, K-A-P-P-A, -P -P they're in Denmark. They produce K2MK7 that has number one, a trans factor, number two, a 72 hour half-life. Plus they've spent their money on all the clinicals to see what it does. It, it supports immune system function. Most importantly, it goes in and it's the director for calcium. It sees any calcium in the body where it's not right. It goes, no, no, you don't belong in the arteries, okay? These hardened arteries, no, they can't be there. Got to come back out of there and go in the bones. It's a director. So that's why you see a dramatic shift when you use K2MK7. Even only 120 micrograms a day makes a difference. And that's the RDA. So the United States FDA and Health Canada says 120 micrograms a day. The reality is you can do 2000 micrograms a day, but we can't advertise it as that. That's between you and that product. We can't tell you that you should be doing 2000 micrograms a day. We tell you, we recommend 120 micrograms a day. So a one month supply is very affordable. If, for, if a person is an adventurer, and they take their own risk because there's no risk involved in because you're not going to harm yourself. And they want to do 2000 micrograms a day for the first month. They're going to rapidly repair the things that were out of line or out of equilibrium in their body. And that's what I did. I did it myself and I went, oh, wow, that's cool. So I spent, <laughs> spent a bunch of money for one month and got that done. And then you just go back down to maintenance because then you're good. How do you measure something like that? I mean, how do you measure how much calcification is in well, the pathways for? Go to a heart? cardiologist, ask for the full, all the tests. Mm. they'll tell you 
So the full measure. barrage of tests for cardiovascular health. Okay. And is that something where most people could just electively say, hey, I want this? Or do they have to have, in our, in our system in America, I don't know how it is in Canada, usually for you to go to your physician and request anything, you have to have a condition first. Uh, you have to have a recommendation. A GP will, will refer you to a cardiologist. It's that way up here. Everything up here, they say is free. It's the furthest thing from free. Yes. It's the, I would say healthcare is terrifically expensive up here because mm -hmm. we don't ever use it and we pay through the nose for it constantly. It's in the premiums and the taxes and the things that we pay. Mm -hmm. uh, in the States, I think it's a far superior system because then you can you can kind of go a la carte as well. You can go and, and pay a doctor. Hey, I want to have something more. I'm going to pay you for this. I want better service. I want it faster. I want this blood panel. So I think the, the States is far, far more advanced. And then even far more advanced than the U S is Europe, you know, well, before you all these restrictions, right? You talked about the, the cardiovascular health and I, and I got to go back to this because we've, we've talked about magnesium on the show before for sleep, but the doing it on the skin versus sublingual. So yeah. you know, like the structured versus non-structured when it comes to magnesium, the transdermal, this is the spray. This is called the ease. I do it actually in the sauna. So every morning I'm in the sauna and I'm spraying this on myself in the mornings. This doesn't make you sleepy. I mean, magne magnesium can be a sleep supplement, but can you explain to people that want to use magnesium from a transdermal perspective that aren't looking for a sleep benefit, that are looking for the other benefits of the magnesium? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it, it does all of the benefits of magnesium, but the reason it's so effective because you put it geographically. <clears throat> when you consume an oral magnesium, it's got to go through your whole digestive tract, which you know, it gets hammered by the kidneys and it does a bunch of stuff. So when you put it through the skin, you put it in your ankles, it's going to go right there, right then into your microcirculation. The ease is a very specific form. It is not magnesium chloride melted in water and put in a spray bottle and say here, this is a very high end USP pharmaceutical grade, right? So it has to be at a ultra purity level of magnesium chloride hexahydrate. We, it, the only place we can get it is out of Europe. You can't even buy it in the States. It's manufactured only in Europe as an extract from seawater. It's not a mined product, which is most magnesium chloride's mined product. The raw material in that product costs 10 times more to buy than any other magnesium chloride in the world. We do not translate that to the client. Our, our, our product is priced according to what the market is normally for transdermal magnesiums. But the efficacy, it takes 11 hours to make that because we have a special implosion technology that we put it in. It sounds woo-woo, but it's not is very highly technical and very engineering based. So it takes 11 hours to make it. So you notice when you put that on, it feels like water and it just goes right in. It's not. Spray it in your mouth, you'll find out how strong it is. But it's the form of it and it's the structure of it. It has six water molecules attached to every molecule of magnesium chloride. When you're in the sauna, depending on how hot it is, you're anything above 102 degrees, your body's releasing. So if you jump into a bathtub above 102 degrees, your body releases. So we tell people when they're going to use magnesium in their bath, they keep it under 102. Mm. Right. So I actually so, should be doing this after the sauna, not in the sauna. That's right. Yep. Okay, exactly. Because cool. you're, you're wide that. open. And, yep. and plus you're going to shower after the sauna, right? Mm -hmm. Well, usually I do the cold plunge. Exactly. Yeah. So I can gonna, do it after the cold be, plunge. That's right. You're, exactly. Okay. Yes. Is, Wonderful. Is, once you're not going to be washing stuff off your body, it only takes about 90 seconds to start going in, you feel that stuff going in. So what we recommend is 30 sprays in the morning after a shower, if you have a shower, and then 30 sprays right before you go to bed. Because when you, it gives you, it gives you a calm, clear energy through the day, but it allows your body to go into parasympathetic. Mm -hmm. It works with your autonomic nervous system because your brain is monitoring everything. When it's low on magnesium, it is tends to go into uh, sympathetic stress. Ian, you're a wizard. <laughs> you got a lot of knowledge, man. And it came from your own experience in life. We talked about the, I think three or four big ones for people. And, we're, and you gave us a discount code. We're going to talk about this later on the podcast too. Right now, if y'all are interested, just go to wellnessforce.com forward slash activation. And you can just use the code wellnessforce. Ian and his team gave us 20% off, which is super generous. So that's the code wellnessforce at wellnessforce.com forward slash activation. So go check it out now. If you're watching the podcast, share this with somebody who maybe themselves are going through a radical health journey. Ian, before we let you go, I got to ask you a few more questions because I told you I took about 50 notes for this conversation. The, the embodiment process for you 
the embodiment of this knowledge. It's one thing to go out there and have a health issue and gather as much information as you can. But the big piece that we always explore in Wellness Force is we gather, we apply, and lastly, most importantly, we embody. What are the things that you, on an emotional level, have embodied that allow these health changes to propagate, to continue, and to sustain? In other words, what emotionally have you shifted about yourself? Maybe identity, maybe mindset, because that's important in addition to these supplements. Uh, this is a major part of it. So I will I will categorize it as joy. So suffering brings joy sometimes. The right kind of suffering brings real joy. Huh. Suffering for doing something stupid, that doesn't bring much joy. But when you're going through the suffering process of remediation, where you're following a protocol and you see the results that are measurable, you feel the joy come into your body, but you feel it come into your emotions. So joy is the fuel that drives enthusiasm enthusiasm is what gets you going and goes like, dude, how, okay. Nothing feels as great as feeling great. <laughs> True story. <laughs> and so can I feel better than that? Yes. It, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. If I could have that for other people, that would give me great joy because there's always a huge amount of joy when we see other people enjoying themselves. And especially if we were just telling them, cause they got to do it right. I can't do it for them. But if I know the keys and I give them the key and they use the key, beautiful. So it was, the, it was this joyful thing that happened. And even if you're like, we have all kinds of stressors, right? We're, we're a primary manufacturer. Now we have so many things that, that try to stress us, but we're still uninformed enthusiasts when we know we can get better and better and better. When, and the reason, I, the reason I say uninformed is because if I'm, if I'm worrying about every last thing that's out there, I don't have to do that anymore. All I knew is what we were given as a mission to do and that the how would show up. And if we had resistance, that was there to strengthen us, to make us better, more efficient when we get through that breakthrough. We had to have all kinds of obstacles. You know, we got shut down by Health Canada for six months in 2019, right out of the blue. They just walked in and went, do, 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 because they, they had some phone calls. We were doing nothing wrong. They knew that, hmm. but they were, they were able to pressure us. And so I just, my attitude was like, hey, we're good. So we're going to shut down for six months. I didn't know it was going to be six months. They said 30 days and they, they keep extending it. Right. And it was over just a technicality is all it was. It had nothing to do with how we were doing things. They were shocked that they thought they were going to catch us doing a bunch of wrong things. They, they caught us doing everything right. And in spite of that, just because we had not had a site license in the time that they liked, they started pushing us around, but we got through it. We had $6 million of inventory sitting down in Denver. We didn't miss a beat. And then we just kept on going so that it was the built up joy that was already there. I wasn't angry at them. I was like, happy. It's like, okay, this is a new adventure. Wow. This okay. Come on. Ed, you were happy. You got shut down. How is that? No, real? no, I was, I was a happy person. Uh, had nothing to do with getting shut down or running. Okay. Okay. The happiness was already there. I, I couldn't stand the fact that they shut us down. I'm like, dude, seriously, but okay, yeah. this is a new adventure. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to learn a lot. And, and whenever the pain came, I would say, hey, everybody, don't try to alleviate the pain. Let the pain soak in and teach us. Let it teach us because it's like trying to expel a phlegm out of your body. You take a, a, a suppressant, it's the worst thing you could do. No, no, no. Sure. Encourage all, like a massive amount to come out because all that fluorescent phlegm is toxic. You know, so we have to become a better, stronger, faster company. We have this huge obstacle to get through. We're going to learn a lot. And boy, did we learn a lot. Mm. We learned so much. If they hadn't come and done that, it wouldn't have, we, it actually improved our company a lot. So I wasn't resentful towards them. Wasn't, they, they made us throw out a million dollars worth of inventory. One million dollars. They forced it. It's like, wow, why would we do that? Why would you do that? You know, but they, that's what they do. So, so the, pain teacher, the pain teacher came and you were humble enough to learn its lesson that it wanted yes. to bring you. That's right. a huge piece for the mind, because like you said, number one thing we do, we think, then we breathe and then we pump blood. I would say that it, 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 the thoughts far trump the breathing. I mean, 90,000 thoughts a day from what I've heard and what I've researched myself, most of those being negative in a world that you live in, which is supplementation and natural health, that world, um, it's, it's not as profitable as the pharmaceutical world. It's just not. 
Like no. you're, you're here to be on purpose. Yes. To make some profit because why wouldn't you make profits? You can reinvest that and serve more and have deeper purpose delivery. But, but the pharmaceutical world, there's this massive dichotomy between natural health. Ian, I don't know if you know this, the freight, the search term natural immunity has been blocked on Facebook, on Instagram. You try to Google natural immunity. It's blocked. It's censored. How are you guys at Activation? How do you see the road ahead as a company like yours that give people these incredible products? I mean, products that you can't you can't necessarily patent. You can patent the formulation, but you can't patent Mother Nature. How do you see yourself going to the market in 2022, 2023? Like, what do you envision? What's your vision for the next couple of years with this natural world that you operate in? All right. So what's happening right now is there's a, a, a culling and a thinning out of the people who are being defined. So like yourself and myself and the people listening, they're people who have a, they're, have a very large amount of love within their being. And I'm not talking about gushing emotional love. I'm talking about genuine love, love for being the best you can be, love for being the most valuable, love for your body, love for your family, and love for other people. So that means you love yourself and we're not in love with ourselves. We love ourselves. So that is demonstrated by how we act. So what we are doing right now is simply connecting with those people who have that great deal of love and care because we can't produce love and care for people. We can only nurture it. What's already there. So with the people who don't care, they don't, we don't need to worry about search terms per se, like natural immunity is something that we already have. So if people are looking for a way to support their natural immunity, it's all around us all the time. And it's so obvious that when you're told to do something harmful to yourself, you can't. So I'm not against, I'm not a protester. I'm not anti this, sure. anti that. I can't harm myself. I can do things that improve my being and those around me. That's what I can do. I have full liberty for doing that. If anyone stands in the way of that, that's on them then not on us. I don't consent to harming myself and I don't consent to harming others. And I don't consent to being blocked on helping others. So we consent to being a positive attribute to supporting people the way we would love to be supported and to, so there's a resonant vibration. The reason you and I got together is because we resonate on very many frequency bandwidths and spectrums that are the same. So the people listening are on that resonant bandwidth, that bandwidth. And they're, they're connected. They're, they're going, yeah, I can, mm -hmm. I can relate to this because it's just real. Don't try to sell something. Just tell the truth yes. about what it is. And then people go, that's just the truth. <laughs> that's like, the root. You yeah. just got to the root, Ian. And, and this is a phrase that I want to round out our conversation with. And this is our root health. You talked mm -hmm. about this in your video. It's linked right here below this video. And it's about this infinite intelligence, our body. This is why we rebranded. We rebranded this year. And on the homepage of Wellness Force, it's honoring the intelligence in us all. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. I believe that if we just honor truly honor not do it for a marketing message not do it because we're you know wanting to get more clicks like true <laughs> honoring of the intelligence inside of us that yes. allows you and i to connect heart to heart that allows us to be here on planet earth together the honoring of that is so powerful but we must honor the roots you know the trees that have roots we have roots in our relationships these roots can get decayed over time so how do you if you can express in a paragraph or just you know full reign how do you feel like nature holds the keys to these roots, the getting the body back to its original state? What does that truly mean for you to, to honor the intelligence, to treat the root of our health and to bring our body back to its homeostasis? You know, it's, it's peace. Well, I would say you, you would use an analogy of an oak tree. So a large old oak tree who has large branches and is on the coast and is in the wind and the wind comes and blows and the storms come and they blow. And the more that that massive trunk, which is attached to a tree the size of itself underneath the ground, moves, it breaks up the soil and the rocks it is in for the roots to go deeper. Because you always want your root system to go deeper and to have a greater connection with other roots around you. And trees now they know communicate through the root systems with each other. So there's this massive transfer of energy. So the deeper your foundation of health goes and the more gaps are filled, the more you have anything missing or deficiencies filled, 
the more you can build on top of that because everyone's trying to build on something that is weak. And that's what I, that's what I found. I have my, my whole entire constitution, my health picture, my equilibrium, my homeostasis was excessively weak. So then I had to go back to the foundation and go, how did that happen? Oh, that's how that happened. Okay, fix this. You got to do this first before you can build up here. It's like, like trying to become strong and powerful when you haven't got mobility, agility, and flexibility. You're going to yeah. break something. Yeah. So that's the, the root health is that tree that you can't see underneath the surface. And that, that supports a super healthy tree that you see above the surface, which is who, how we show up. So that, it's that's a beautiful the analogy. It's a beautiful man, analogy, and and I I love communicate by I love communicating by analogy and metaphor because you can understand it with your eyes closed. You know, everybody can get story. Everybody feels story. So if you guys are dealing with unique health challenges, yes, this is not medical advice. Obviously, go to your primary physician. I'm I'm held by legal terms to say that. And also, if you want to supplement your process and give yourself some real tools that'll actually help you along the way, um, this is something to take a strong look at. You know, these four things we talked about, the iodine, the magnesium, um, the D3, the K2, the Solaris, like these are things that are bundled on the website. Give this a test run, give it a trial run. I would say 30 to 90 days to really notice if products of any kind, especially these products, are going to be something that you use for the long term. Ian, we covered so much ground uh, in regards to supporting ourselves and epigenetics and nature's wisdom and your own story and emotional health and uh, being a father. There's so many pieces that we explored. What did we miss? You know, when you go on interviews and there's a lot of information about you online, you're really a wizard. Like what is something that someone hasn't asked you that you really want to share with the world? Well, I think the, what's your purpose of being here is why are you here? What's up? What's that all about? Mm. You know, people don't, don't necessarily want to ask that question all the time, or they've already got their answer, but we were dumped in here. And I mean, literally dumped in here because there's, we're in a polluted mess. We're in a situation that's continuously challenging and we're super vulnerable. Yeah. Wow, are we vulnerable and fragile? And we are so dependent on infrastructure, especially in this age. So why were you placed in this age? How do we show up in this age? Why weren't we born in the 1700s or the 1800s or back in the 800s? There's a purpose and a reason why we were placed positionally here at this particular time. And every single person has a mission and every single person has a super gift. The strange thing is, is that many people miss being able to find out what their mission is and what their super gift is because they were burdened down by so many distractions of things that are doing everything except for what they're supposed to be doing. Yes. Right. So you're on your mission. I'm on my mission now because the clarity came through a whole iterational you know, journey of whatever. And a clar clarity that was birthed from pain oh. for myself. And, and right. it seems like you too. Yeah. We get shattered and then we get rebuilt. Mm -hmm. So I think people should most of all be thinking about how can they become the best version of themselves? What will it take to do that? Why would they want to do that? And what is it being, what, how could they become the most valuable on the earth? And at the same time, experience all the attributes that are being expressed to us because josh think about it if you were if you and i were the first two men on the earth with our wives right now like there was the four of us we walked out on this earth there's no charge for anything on this earth it's free 100 percent free just depending on how much we could learn about the elements and how to use them properly and how to create a beautiful earth around us from the things that are already here it's all free did anybody charge you for your body there was no cash register when you showed up saying, hey, man, where's the money? Mm -hmm. You can't have your, no, free. Your talent, your level of intelligence, much given, much required, is all given to you for free, all given to me for free. What are we doing with it? What are we doing? Are we using our gifts to the maximum? Because your gift isn't for you, it's for me. Your gift is for everyone around you. My gift is for you, it's for everyone around me. It's never for me. You know, it's, it's so if we could all think, we're here to serve and love people. That's how we serve and love God. That's it. It's not a religious thing. It's just an actual reality thing because <laughs> religion takes all that and tries to manipulate it into a box Yes. and tries to give you a title. And then you become entitled when you got a title. I don't want a title. 
I don't like entitlement because then I'll because I would naturally tend to be entitled, mm-hmm. you know, as as a very fragile being. And I think we should all ask ourselves, where are the areas I'm still greedy and selfish? I'm sure they're there. They show up once in a while. And they go. I thought that got dealt with. That you know what? I'm still greedy and selfish over there. Wow, that's okay. Got to detox that. It's like a, a big boil that comes up. You got to just squish all the garbage mm-hmm. out of it, mm-hmm. and then it can heal. But if we if I don't want to admit, oh, I'm not greedy. I I I, I don't have any uh, love of money. Come on. That's a sure sign that you probably do. And Dude, the shadow needs sure. exploration. <laughs> We're in this constant cleansing process, Ian, of yeah. mind, body, and spirit. We're always cleaning, always detoxing all the time right. if we choose. And of course, if we choose not to, then like you said, we get stuffed up. We get blocked inside. So if someone is with us and you're feeling blocked, wellnessforce.com forward slash activation. Use the code wellnessforce. You get 20% off. This is the kind of company I love to lock arms with. I'm very cautious and careful about who I interview and who I partner with. And so, Ian, it's an honor. I really appreciate you and I acknowledge you for you sharing your gift with the world and your story and going through having the courage to say yes to the ordeal instead of becoming a victim. It's inspirational, man. On a, on a whole new level for us. So we appreciate you. We see you and we acknowledge you. So thank you for coming on the show. Josh, it's been a privilege to be here. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, wellnessforce.com forward slash group. We're going to talk more about Ian there. And until Ian and I see you again on another podcast, we're both wishing you love and wellness. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah.